Jewish people. He had a Jewish girlfriend. <clears throat> uh, but still, when he was told to deport the Jews, he did that. And when he was told to get rid of them, he did that. All, and, and here's the scary thing, all without malice, all without anger, all without hatred, which I find very interesting. Now, because I tend to make these connections, and what I connected to was this past week, and again, you know, the Haunted Cabaret is the home of all things horror, so I will jump around like this from time to time. This past week, there was in the news that after, in Boston, after a Boston Red Sox game, we had a couple of intoxicated Boston Red Sox fans who thought it was a fun idea to go find a homeless uh, Hispanic person uh, sleeping on a bench, and they got an iron bar, and they beat him to within an inch of his life, broke his couple of bones, and uh, pissed on him, and walked away laughing, and they thought it was fun. And so, again, I make these connections. I'm saying, back to the Third Reich. I mean, and what I thought of is, I wonder, just like the Nazis, again, this, I this guy Eichmann, and they say Hitler was the same way, that he really didn't give a damn about Jews. I mean, yeah, we don't know if some of the other guys actually hated them. But they were scapegoats. They were an excuse. You, know, you always need, an, when you want to take power, when you want to be a dictator, when you want to lord it over people, you always need a scapegoat. You always need an excuse. And back in Germany, the Jews were the reason Germany had lost the war in World War I, and they needed to fight another one. And Jews were the excuse for the economy being crap. Jews were the excuse for the currency being devalued. Uh, this sounds familiar <laughs> for some reason. And then I cross-referenced that with this homeless guy being a, you know, almost beaten to death by two baseball fans who didn't see anything wrong with it. And they arrested him because there was a witness. And he said to the cops, oh, yeah, um, they were, they're Donald Trump supporters. And you know, they thought this was a good idea. They thought Donald Trump would approve of it. And so then you watch Donald Trump. Now, they asked him, they asked Donald Trump about this incident. And Donald Trump, in his Donald Trump style, when it's something that he doesn't care one little bit about, says, oh, that's a shame. And then went on talking. <laughs> what he said was, that's a shame. Uh, my followers are very passionate. Next. Now, lu now, luckily for him, and luckily for the rest of us, that didn't stand, because apparently his campaign manager managed to sit him down and resulted in another Donald Trump statement a couple of days later this past Friday where he said that was a terrible thing and he would never condone violence. And all of a sudden, Donald Trump was oozing sympathy for this fellow who had been beaten and pissed on. It wasn't his idea. And all this got me thinking about, I wonder what would happen should Donald Trump be president, or somebody like Donald Trump, yeah. and say, you know what, all the problems in America are caused by these illegal immigrants. And holy shit, they're already saying that. I'm not sure, but I think some people are already saying that. There's 11 million illegal immigrants in the United States as opposed to 300 million regular Americans, um, American citizens, if you want to make the difference there. Um, the stock market is being run by a bunch of financial morons that couldn't find, they couldn't add two and two. Um, the president and the Congress are either bought and paid for by the idiots running the stock market, the financiers, or they're clueless too. But it's the fault of these 11 million immigrants that snuck across the border so they can go pick peaches or, or whatever they're picking out. It's their fault. In other words, the whole reason that America is in the mess it's in is because of these illegal immigrants. Now, I don't know what anybody out there thinks about illegal immigrants or immigration or if you hate Spanish people, but like I say, I just made that mental connection. 
between this guy Eichmann, who you know was happy to exterminate people he had nothing against, and Donald Trump saying, "Oh, isn't that a shame?" And then on to the next political question. He's completely unfazed, as if he, oh, well, unfazed. It, that's the word, unfazed. Somebody, yeah, somebody did this, you know, because you know, the Donald Trump supporters, they did this, yeah, unfazed. Yeah. If you, like, you know, well, it's not my fault, whatever. Yeah, if, yeah, if, you know, so like, if, like you said to him, oh, I stepped in dog crap, you know, yeah. oh, that's a shame. Yeah, sorry, here's a tissue. Yeah. Although he didn't, I, I don't think he would say, here's a tissue. He'd just what? say, yeah. oh, sorry. Yeah. Anybody else notice the alien probing going on below us here? Thankfully, they're not probing up through the floor. I don't know. Is that um, being picked up on the microphones at all? No. Oh, and there's this, there's this humming shame. sound. Well, there, there is. Now. Yeah. Chuckles, you're making me nervous this week because <laughs> first you're interested in uh, mother-son sexual activity. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> never, 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 never. Now you're talking. Of, now you're worried about alien probing, and we all know where those probes go. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, our listeners can't pick it up on the microphone, uh, according to our producer, but there are a couple of people who live downstairs <laughs> in uh, the space below our studio, and then, and they make these strange humming noises a lot. They're not people. They're lizard men. Bot they're people. Well, in, they're in good disguise, because they, what they look like is a couple of, actually a couple of refugees from Necronomicon. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> or the latest Star Trek. Or the, or Star Trek. Uh, yeah, so I, that's not lovemaking noise then. That's beam me up, Scotty noise. Well, no, that's it, that hum is, it could be the sound of lovemaking at the hands of mechanical devices. Oh, they got one I of think the plug-in devices. Right, that's what Chuckles is getting at. I mean, gotcha. he's, he's visualizing... Those That's two, a lot of power. I am not visualizing that at all. You're visualizing those two guys downstairs bent over. You listen, Ooh. you you keep Ooh. this up, and I am going to put an image in your head that will shut us down for life. <gasps> that F- would be awesome. FCC, FCC. No, I don't. I I can speak right around FCC, but trust me, it'll be an image that you will never forget. Now he's curious. You can't do that to George. It oh, just nurse, piques the curiosity. Yeah, Nurse Misery is also curious. I am <laughs> evil. Do not push my buttons. I nurse can Mi- just nurse, go la 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 la. Nurse Misery actually looks aroused at the idea of what <laughs> you're coming up with. All I'm going to say is it's a great bird that's on fire and usually smells a lot. Keep it going. And I will put that image. Oh, oh yuck. Of that. Yeah. You get where I'm going with this. I, I know of whom we speak. Baloney. <laughs> B.O. <laughs> Something that's not fancy together. The reason you <laughs> open the doors at a convention. You still have no clue where I'm going, do you? I, I'm waiting. <laughs> no, I'm not saying the person's name because they are listening right now. Well, you never know. Oh, no. They they are. They definitely are. They they. Hang right on. Pirate. Here we go. <laughs> Smelling a lot. <laughs> like a low tide. Like that young lady in your car. <laughs> worse, probably. Oh, we're getting back to calamari. Yeah. Now, far worse than calamari. Calamari smells yep. good. Yep, it makes Danny's mouth smell like he brushed his oh, teeth. Shit. <laughs> Uh, let's go back to the music. <laughs> Good call. Yeah, let's let's actually let's indulge in a little nepotism here. Uh, full disclosure: this next tune is uh, played on by yours truly. Uh, features our producer on vocals. This is Tony Jones and the Cretan Three. Bring out your dead here on the Haunted Cabaret on Rhode Island Free Radio.
brown Cold black stare and an evil smile It'll only hurt for a little while Cross of blood on the door Death has come to say more Nothing left, only death Judgment day, it's judgment day Bring out your day Bring out your day was Tony Jones and the Cretan 3 featuring yours truly and our producer here Tony Jones Tony Jones and the Cretan 3 which by the way is back in action as of the last couple of weeks we've just released our newest single Drink Dance Die backed with well if it was a 45 uh, it would be backed with but I don't Tony what can we say it's a what, how do we say that now I don't know. Technically, it's the B side, right? But there's right, no what, B I'm, side to right, that's, be yeah. had. Okay, so we've just released two songs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, now, also, we'll, we should be going back in the studio. We've written some new material, uh, playing pretty soon. I was going to say the backyard or an arena near you, <laughs> but... Um, that line's used by somebody else. Plus, it seems like the further away from home we play, the better we do. So I don't know. Maybe we should just skip West Warwick <laughs> and head all the way to Providence. Gee, I wonder if we're the first band in history to think maybe we should skip West Warwick. <laughs> I think most don't even bother with it. Most people, most don't even know it's here. Just face the fact. But um, yes, so we are back in action, which is a good thing for us. And I don't know, Chuckles. I'm af- with, after H.P. Lovecraft, Donald Trump, um, and your list of clues. Now, basically, you realize that if anybody connects those dots that you just laid out there, they're just going to show up here and punch you right in the face. Well, I mean, you realize be the that first. You've, just, you've, you've just barely made peace with ISIS. Step in line behind. Fat flat. 